Well, you're either in an emergency scenario where you may have to deal with the media or you could be, and that's the purpose for this video. In the next few minutes, we're going to give you strategies to help you deal with the media and make them an asset for saving lives and protecting property. Here are some initial strategies to make sure that the media is working for you. It starts with a friendly introduction, and yours shouldn't start with, oh crap, it's these guys. It should start with, hi, I'm so-and-so from whatever, whatever agency, glad you're here. What's your deadline? When you say that, what's your deadline, they know that you get it and they'll instantly like you better, and it goes better if they like you. Follow that up with this. Here's the main thing we need people to know. Even before the interview starts, when you say that, it gets things off on the right foot. Okay, now, you don't get in control by saying, get over here and do this because I said so and I'm the authorities. That never works. It just makes them mad and it goes better if they like you. You never want to make enemies of somebody who buys their ink by the barrel. Okay, they're going to want answers right away. So let them know how much time you're going to need to gather your thoughts. Five minutes is completely reasonable. Make notes and come into the interview or the press conference prepared. It's okay to do that. The media is the most direct channel to get key information to a lot of people at the same time. But for their purposes, what the media exists for is to make money. Their job is to get people to read ads or sit through commercials. And if you know that, you can get in control by giving them what they want. Now, you don't sensationalize, you don't spin, you don't emotionalize. You just speak in facts. But you can put those facts in ways that they can use. So the three questions you should always answer to save lives and protect property are these. One, what's going on here? Two, what are you doing about it? Three, what should the public do? So you could get bombarded with a ton of requests. So who's supposed to get your time? Well, don't play favorites, OK? If national and local media are on scene, treat everybody the same, but treat, treat your local media a little better. You only have to deal with accredited media, and it goes better if you've already built those relationships in advance. But the concerned citizen with the iPhone and the YouTube account, they don't count as media. However, refuse them politely and apologetically because if you're a jerk to them, that's going on YouTube for sure. Often the best thing you can do is call a press conference. It helps you avoid having to do a whole bunch of individual interviews. So as you set up your press conference, make sure that the room where it's held has easy access in and out of the room and that you don't have to walk through the crowd to get to where you're going to speak. You should always be standing up in a press conference or in any interview. And if possible, the negative scene like the fire or the flood, you don't really want that behind you. Behind you should be like an emergency response vehicle, a clean wall, or one way or the other, ideally, your company's logo should be behind you. There's certain things that you should take with you into an interview or a press conference. You're going to want to take notes both before and even potentially during the interview. Make sure your notes are very big, written boldly, and that they're easy to reference. Your appearance, including your apparel, should say, we have a plan and we're in control. If you record the interview yourself, that could help keep everybody accountable and provide a good record. Contact information for local media, contact information for people within your agency, and contact information for other agencies. All that could be helpful to have right there at your fingertips in the interview or the press conference. There are some important things to avoid. One is, there's no such thing as off the record. And as long as there's media on site, you are on the record and anything you say could be quoted. Here's another thing. Sometimes these situations can be stressful, right? We often use humor to kind of relieve some stress, but don't do that. It doesn't play well. Humor is always a liability, and it's not an asset. Here's another one. Never say no comment. 
Instead, say something like this. I can't speak to that, but what I can tell you is, then just say your key message or something that you know is true, but never say no comment. Never carry your phone into an interview, even if it's on vibrate. It's just a distraction. Just hand it off to somebody competent who can answer it for you. Can you tell me what's going on here? Yes, after the school caught fire, 911 was contacted. Dispatchers paged out uh, fire department, EMS, um, I'm, I'm sorry, EMS, uh, law enforcement were on scene trying to secure the scene and just a second here. They were trying to secure the scene and... Isn't it true that your department has already spent all of the donated funds and the project isn't even 50% complete? No, absolutely not. The project is on track. Sure, we'd always like to have some extra funds. Well, budgets, I mean, they're like rules. Aren't they meant to be broken? Our department is advising households to evacuate immediately. There's a very definite explosion risk here. The free H1N1 clinic will be held at 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. today at the community center. Ma'am, we know that the most at-risk people are elderly and children. How will elderly people get to the community center? And what about children whose parents work? Isn't this a pretty half-hearted attempt at protecting the most vulnerable people from this impending health crisis? Well, we at the health center, I think that's a pretty unfair question that you're asking. There are several kinds of questions that you should never answer. If something's under investigation, you can just say, that's under investigation. When you're prevented by law, like a HIPAA law or dealing with minors, for example, when you don't know the answer, it's okay to just say, I don't know. When you don't understand the question, just ask them to rephrase it. When the question calls for speculation and why and how questions, they're especially like this. If the question is better suited to somebody else, just put the person who asked the question in touch with the most competent person to answer. In any of these situations, you're given an opportunity to reiterate your key message. You also want to avoid being impersonal. It's important to make a statement of empathy. Our work on the fire department is to adjust situations at hand and bring it to a swift resolution. But as members of this community, our hearts and thoughts are always with those that are affected by the disaster. You should always be standing and at eye level with the camera. If the camera is above you, it makes you look diminutive. And you don't want the camera below you because it makes you look like Big Brother. You want the camera at eye level. But don't look directly into the lens. When you do, it's just like you're staring the audience right in the eye. Instead, you want to look at the interviewer, the reporter, or the camera operator. Look just off to the side. It's OK to pause. You don't have to feel like you need to fill time. It's normal to take breaks as long as they aren't uncomfortably long. That helps the editors get clean sound, sound bites and they like that. You always want to give the most important information first. Unlike a typical incident report, a good interview or press conference should not start with when something happened. They start with the summary of what happened, then move on to what you're doing about it, and then what the public needs to do. If there's an urgent public response needed, it might start and end with what the public needs to do, like in an evacuation. Be prepared to bridge. You're going to get asked questions that you can't answer. If you have a key message and you know how to bridge, you'll never get stuck. Just say something like, well, oh, I can't speak to that, but what I can tell you is, or it would be unfair for me to speculate, but what I can tell you is, or you could say something like, that's currently under investigation, but what I can tell you is, and then you're going to say your key message. And we've mentioned key messages a few times. It's one of the most important things you should do. Have one sentence that's easy to say 
and that's the most important thing that people need to know. You can be prepared to say your key message at least three times in any interview, and maybe as many as seven times. For example, in a flood event, it might be something like, all residents in low-lying areas should evacuate right now. Are you sure the levees can hold? You know, ma'am, I'm really not qualified to give you an answer on that. That would be a question for the uh, Army Corps of Engineers, which their office, I believe, is around the command center. And our, our efforts right now are to get the people in the low-lying areas to move on and, and get to higher ground so there isn't a threat for their life or safety. Okay, let's hit the high points one last time. Clean yourself up and wear something that makes you look official. Work from notes and make sure they're easy to read. Run the formula. What's going on here? What are you doing about it? What do people need to do? Have a key message and bridge back to it at least three times. Finally, practice. It's okay to have somebody else ask you a few questions and then run through your key message a time or two. Try saying your statement out loud at least once or twice before you go live. I wish you success. Thank you for what you do to save lives and protect property. I trust that you'll tap into the power of the media to do that in a complete and effective way. Good luck.